Let's create a small demo application to demonstrate the new Qt Labs controls and the latest version of Qt Creator. I will create the UI of a home automation software and I use a material style that comes with the new controls. I clean up the application created by the wizard. Now I create a custom label that can be used later. The custom label uses a color from the material style color palette. To be able to use the constants from the material style, I have to add the import. Having such a label makes it easier to adjust colors or fonts for text elements in the UI. To have the same background in each part of the UI, I create a background component. I define the color and the theme of the style, so it's used consistently later and can be adjusted in one place. The background component also defines a default width and height. Here I add an alias property to the text of the label and call it title. Adding such an alias property makes it easy to reuse and customize a component. Let's add some eye candy. Now I add a form for the sidebar. A form consists of a .ui.qml file for the UI elements and a .qml file for the implementation. I replace the default item with a background component created earlier. The component page background has a property title in the property editor because I added it as an alias property. Now I define the main layout of the application using anchors. I add the sidebar I created from the item library. The main view gets anchored to the sidebar. In the end I anchor the tab bar. After finishing the main application layout, I add a new form that will become a tab. Again I replace the default item with a background component. I add the imports required for the lab controls to have them available in the item library. I start layouting the items using absolute coordinates and snapping. The context menu can be used to add the items to a grid layout. I reparent the grid layout into the group box. When I reset the size of the group box, it adjusts itself to its contents. Copy and paste can be used to duplicate items. Again I use the grid layout. This time I also adjust the spacing. Let's add the new form to the stack layout. Now I create another form for a tab.
The new controls come with many useful items. Let's use the dial here. We can rotate the progress bar to get a vertical value indicator. The property editor can be used to bind the value of the progress bar to the dial position. Again I use copy and paste to duplicate the controls. This tab is also added to the stack layout. Let us add another tab. Again I replace the default item with a page background component. We can use a binding to control the text of the label depending on the state of the switch. After I roughly arrange the items, I use a context menu to use a grid layout. The item's arrangement is preserved. Let's check out the application we created and run it. Now I design the sidebar and start using the custom label I created in the beginning. I export the combo box in the navigator so it can be used by the implementation file. Let's add some functionality to the sidebar. I choose the clicked single from the button. We jump to the implementation file and the designer already added an empty signal handler. I will add a message dialog. When the button is clicked, the message dialog will open. I 
also add a simple model to the combo box. Let us try out the application again. 